My name's Tim. I'm a musician, a car collector, an automotive journalist, and a lover of all things automotive. I've bought and sold collectible cars for two decades, and I hope my experiences and my point of view helps you find the car of your dreams. And the car you see here, the Rosso Alpha, Alfa Romeo 155 Twin Spark was one of the cars of my dreams. Once they were legal to import, I got on it. I loved these cars from touring car racing. Tarquini drove the car to victory on numerous occasions and the car even won championships outright. The car was introduced in the 1992 model year and was made all the way through till 1998. It was designed by a gent named Spada and he had an eye for design. It was angular, it was wedge shaped, it was a striking car in and out and moved Alfa Romeo's design language towards the 2000s. And for me, it even echoed that SZ that I love. One thing you'll know I love about cars from this era is that they don't weigh a lot. This car weighed between 2,600 and 3,100 pounds, depending on what spec you got. And you could have anything from a 1.7 liter four cylinder all the way up to a Busso V6. You could even have one of these in four wheel drive that was essentially a Lancia Delta Integrale in this suit. It was called the Q4. I decided I wanted low weight. I wanted something closer to the BTCC spec and I ended up with a variable valve timing twin spark two liter that you see here. Very lightweight car. It's close to 2,700 pounds. It feels very touring car when you're driving it. I've had this Alfa Romeo 155 twin spark for maybe two years now. I don't know, it's been a minute. And uh, I had meant to do a video and I had meant to do a video. So here is the video. Alfa Romeo. 155 Twin Spark. What is it that convinced me that I needed to import an Alfa Romeo 155? British touring cars, plain and simple. British touring cars is the answer. Uh, British touring car racing, uh, when this car was when this car was new, was an exceptional thing. This car did really well in British touring car racing, and it went on to do really, really well in DTM racing as well, although in a more meaty spec. But I was just in love with the shape. I, I love a good wedge, and this car, even though it's a sedan, has that wedge shape. Now, our particular 155 here was actually brought over by a friend of mine, and he, I told him exactly the spec I was looking for. He knew, you know, once these were allowed in that I had wanted one, he found one and, and hey, come over to my house. And I popped over and there sat on his forecourt was an Alfa Romeo 155, exactly like the one I wanted. So it was very cool to, uh, to get a chance to have this car. And it's, uh, it's, it's a beautiful car in terms of condition. Uh, I've now gotten a chance to see about five 155s, uh, both abroad and, and here. I think there's three or four that I've seen in the country. This is by far the cleanest, nicest example. Now, some people would say they, that there's a later uh, four-wheel drive version. Wouldn't that be the one that I would want? It's more high performance. BTCC was, was the way for me. It was naturally aspirated, small engine, carry momentum and carry momentum this car does very well uh, this car feels spiritually like a mark ii volkswagen and it responds really well to tight turn-ins and uh it is a great chassis for that purpose you can definitely feel that um you know that it was going to be good because in that era Chassis were a little loosey-goosey, if I'm honest. And this one uh, is pretty tight, feels pretty good. Uh, this Twin Spark engine has great torque. From down low. And even has it on top. And uh, I have to say, I've driven both the V6, uh, which everyone says they love, and it doesn't sound much better than this. This thing, I don't know how Alfa Romeo does it, but even this Twin Spark car sounds pretty great. Now, supposedly this car has a tune. I have no idea. This car, 
uh, you know, makes approximately, let's just say 140 or, you know, on its best day, 150 horsepower. And it feels about like that. But in terms of the chassis, it's a delightful chassis. Now, as you know from watching potentially other videos on my channel, uh, I do have another, what I would consider to be a great DTM, British Touring Car, Touring Car era vehicle. And that's my Mercedes 192.316. For me, I'm t I've gotten to the point more recently here where I have so many cars that it's almost become I, I wouldn't say impractical, but you know, every year cars need a little something. And I just, I got to the point where it's sort of like when you have over 20 cars and they're all nice cars and you, you know, they're not like projects in waiting or they're legitimately nice vehicles, you kind of don't want to let, let them sit around. And you know, these cars, some of them just don't get driven. I kind of was like, you know, I'm going to keep one of the touring car style cars and for me the the way that i came into that 192 316 is just a very charming uh story and uh so for me i think i've got to keep that car and so that means this one you know may move on uh, in the near future i have really gotten a chance to enjoy this car and uh i'm i'm shocked how well it performs stacks up against other modern cars. Now you can hear as I'm driving down the road here, it, go, it shifts through the gears beautifully. It's just such a uh, comfortable car. It has power windows. I can wind down the power windows and you know, it's, it's, a, it's very, very much a nice car in the way that a, you know, you would expect a modern car to be. In terms of collectability, particularly here in the States, I'd say this. Red magazines like Octane or Evo or Performance Car back in the day or Car Magazine, Top Gear Magazine, and you've, you've read about these cars that we never got and you've always thought, I'd like to get one of those cars. There's a lot of great cars and a lot of great experiences that are to be had in and around $20,000, like absolutely peak level car. And I, I think, you know, with that being said, I would recommend that you do take the journey of importing something or buying something that's special that you've always wanted that we didn't get in the United States. Or if you're watching this and you're not in the United States, uh, you know, uh, an American car in the UK that, that, that you never officially got in the UK, I would imagine you would have the same feeling. Same thing for South Africa, same thing for Australia. So I would recommend that you go down that journey. Uh, for my kids and I, you know, we talked about the 155. We watched the videos. So it's been nice to, to sort of have them uh, enjoy. I think at least one of my kids has driven this car. And, uh, and my kids are of driving age now. And <laughs> should probably add that. It's one of those things where this car, it's an exciting, it's an exciting car. Uh, the 155 in particular, I think is, I, I, I just think when I think of Alfa Romeo, particularly from this era, it's the best looking Alfa Romeo from this era. Now that could be me. That could be, I, I know that style and looks are subjective and maybe that's just what I think. And, and that's how I feel. So if the 155 isn't your thing, in terms of you know a performance car, it's not like you can find many cars that perform as well as this car. You know, as, a, as, as far as a performance review, I'd say this car versus Mark II, Mark III Volkswagens, this car actually is probably built a little better in some ways. Some of the materials are cheaper, some are better. Um, but overall, I think it's a great alternative because those cars realistically, like a 92 uh, GTI, it has, you know, probably less performance than this car or similar performance than this car is 40 grand or 50 grand or 60 grand if you're going to get a good one. And uh, same with the Jetta GLI. I mean, it's going to be a $25,000 car. This car has zero rust. It had excellent maintenance history. Cars from Japan, which is where this car was sourced from, are typically in great shape. I've, I've now had four or five and currently have three. So, I mean, I can wholeheartedly recommend that. And I think if you're into that era of Volkswagen, Audi, uh, 
or just cars from that era in general, or even American stuff, this is this is much better than those cars. And in terms of the uh, you know the connection to BTCC and other touring car racing, you know Italian touring car racing, it was it was successful in many different countries. Uh, touring car championships. I think partly there was this game called Toka uh, Touring Car Challenge. Oh, I don't even know what that stands for, but this car was great in that game, and I think that kind of played into why I love it so much. Um, anyways, that's the uh, that's the story. I think it's a great. These cars are great values when based against their their peers. So. Uh, I can wholeheartedly recommend one. I think now's definitely the time. I think as time goes on, what you see is cars in this price range only kind of uh, go up in value because the amount of available cars kind of go down. Uh, when I bought this car, uh, there were more available now. You know, if I wanted to replace this car, I'd probably have to pay uh, significantly more. You have seen prices go up a little on, on everything. Anything that was a part of that touring car era in that 80s and 90s late 80s early early to mid 90s era it was just a very special era not just special for me but i think probably for a lot of you and this car really has it where it counts and i think you show up to a show i've taken this to numerous alfa romeo uh in european car events and people lose their mind because they've because they've never seen one if you've never imported something i think you should think about it because there's just a there's something more than the money there.